Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. So you're here because you want to learn how to browse the internet anonymously and not be followed. So there are different levels to this. There is the crazy super secret level, kind of like Mozzie from White Collar, and then there is also the Jack Reacher level as well. And I decided that, that a video that would cover that intense of trying to be anonymous just wasn't practical for the everyday user. So this video is focused on us who want to be on social media, want to be able to go browse YouTube and have a Gmail account, but still be able to go online and avoid being tracked when we want. Because for the everyday user, User, you give your address to something called Amazon. You have a Gmail account which tracks your location and social media which also tracks and mines a lot of your data. We have all of these different accounts but we can still go out and browse the internet anonymously if we choose to and keep all of those accounts. So there is going to be a portion where the internet knows who we are but then there's going to be times that we just don't want to be tracked and we can go and browse the internet and do things without being followed or having our our data mind. So before we jump into this, I just want to give a disclaimer. If you think you're going to do anything stupid or illegal on the internet, you will be caught. If there is a law enforcement agency or any government that has any kind of stability and is well organized, you will be busted. So just be a good human and don't do anything stupid. So before we cover the equipment that you need, I think there's a little bit of information you need to know. If you're going to browse the internet anonymously that you have to do in order to stay anonymous and so we're going to cover those before we talk about actually how we get on the internet anonymously and how we can browse without being tracked. The first thing I want to tell you is just avoid Google altogether. If you're trying to be anonymous, Google is a really poor place to try and do it. But if you're a penetration tester, Google is a really great place to go because it's constantly crawling the internet and we can find new exploits and up to date vulnerabilities. So good for penetration testers, bad for being anonymous. So Google, if you're trying to be anonymous, is just something to avoid altogether. Log out of your Gmail account because when you make a Gmail account it immediately starts tracking your location and if you open up say the Tor browser and you log into your Gmail it doesn't matter that you're on the Tor browser it doesn't matter how many nodes you go through it's gonna know your location and who you are and it will track what you're doing if you're logged into your Gmail account when you're trying to browse anonymously make sure you're logged out of all of your accounts when you are on the Tor browser or using proxy chains another thing to remember is Anytime you connect to or disconnect from the Tor network, you just need to delete all of your cookies because they will be cached. And if you disconnect and you go and try and run some kind of tool, maybe you've disconnected from a proxy, but you're still on Firefox and it has cached your cookies, it will now know your location, all of those places that have stored cookies on your computer. So make sure to delete your cached cookies. That is one way that you can be followed, even if you use everything the right way. And then when you're done and you go and you just want to hop on to Firefox, regular normal user it will still have cache cookies and track your location and your activity so let's say you want to go out and make comments on some website and you just want people to not know who you are so you make a fake name and you're gonna need a fake email but one of the things that people often forget to do is when you're making a fake email just make everything bogus you don't use any of your real name you don't use your birthday you don't use any of that stuff but sometimes there's a subscription requirement to access some functionalities of a website and you can go to your local convenience store and pick up a debit card that is prepaid and use that that you have paid for with cash to have a debit card that you can put on file when you sign up for these websites. This will help keep you anonymous. You'll be able to use a lot of the common websites that you want to use with the full functionality. A lot of people like to ask, well, what about phone security? And for me, I think phones are completely insecure. If you have a smartphone, nothing about it is secure. No app is secure. No phone is secure. No matter what you do, you're not going to be able to be anonymous. There's a reason governments don't try to be anonymous and do their shenanigans with a cell phone. Cell phones are not secure. I would just recommend when you use a cell phone, at least a smartphone, just assume it's not secure and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's just how it is. Next, if you want to try and be really, really super anonymous, you can have your own private network where you connect nothing else to this private network. But this seems to be getting a little far fetched because most of us are not going to do that. I don't do that. In fact, I pretty much never try to be anonymous on the internet because it's 
not one of those things that I'm personally concerned about. Obviously, I have my face here on YouTube and you are watching it. Okay, so now let's talk about the hardware. What do you want if you're going to try and be anonymous? So Prism makes probably one of the best laptops where they actually have kill switches where you can just flick switches on and off and you can disable Bluetooth, you can disable your internet, you can disable a webcam, you can just disable everything on the computer with the flip of a switch. It actually disconnects the power to those things. So even if your computer gets hacked, you can just turn those off and they can't reach your webcam. And if you disconnect the Wi-Fi, they can't reach your computer. So Prism is typically viewed as one of the most secure computers and it will come with an OS system, an operating system that you choose. However, once it arrives, I would say just wipe the operating system and upload a new installment of a system that you trust. I'm going to be giving the demonstration with Kali Linux because that's what I believe most of you will be using. But Tails is also another really good choice because you can turn on some pretty cool features within Tails that will help you stay anonymous. Okay, here we are on the Kali Linux machine and I'm going to just pretend like this is a brand new install. I am on a new secure computer. I am on a trusted Wi-Fi network and everything is all secure and I'm going to show you how you would go about connecting to first the Tor browser which is what I believe to be the easiest way to become anonymous and then also I'm going to show you how to use a proxy chains and be anonymous that way which is going to be really helpful if you're doing any kind of penetration testing and you want to be anonymous without paying for say a VPN you can use proxy chains and you can run in map through proxy chains and hide your IP that way and so I'm going to show you a couple different ways to go about being anonymous. First, the Tor browser. It is really, really simple, especially on Kali Linux. All you have to do is come up here and type in Tor and you will open up the Tor browser. If this is the first time you have opened it, it will install and it'll take maybe 30 seconds and then we will hit connect. It has now connected. So now we are running on the Tor nodes and I just want to point out as well, I am running a VPN. So you can run a VPN and the Tor browser. All this VPN does is it basically makes it so my home IP address is not the IP address that is going into the first node in the Tor network. So if you trust a VPN such as Nord VPN, you can use a VPN if you would like. If not, you can just run this straight into Tor. It should be perfectly fine. Basically, you have to trust someone and that is either going to be the first node in the Tor network or it is going to be a VPN provider. So I'm running a VPN. You don't have to. I just have it running. I haven't disconnected it. So I'm going to leave it on and we're going to go to a DNS leak test. Dot com. And this is going to tell us where we are located. So if we run this, it tells us we are in Germany and my VPN is actually connected out of India. And I am not in India, nor am I in Germany. So we have the VPN running from India and it has gone out to the Tor network and the Tor network has placed me in Germany. So this is the easiest way to go about running the Tor network. Now I want to show you with the proxy chains also that this will work so we can close this. I'm actually going to go ahead and open up Firefox so you can see this. If I go to dnsleaktest.com and I run this you can see that it says I'm running from India through my VPN. So now that you know where I'm coming from you can run this with proxy chains and the way to edit proxy chains you'll go into your Etsy config file and I'll show you what that looks like. It will look like this command right here and we're going to have to do a little bit of editing to this and so you can run it it'll ask you for your password now this is what the proxy chains config file looks like i have it set to dynamic chain so if this is your first time ever running it this will look like this and I have commented out strict chains and I have uncommented dynamic chain and I'm gonna leave it like this. You can go through and read each one of these comments and see which one you would like to run. I'm not going to go through each of them because it will just make this video longer than it needs to be. You can run a chain length of however long you want your chain to be. I think it comes by default at two and I think Tor recommends three. So we'll just leave it as two for now. And then you'll scroll all the way to the bottom and you will have only socks four. So you can just copy and paste it down below and change that four to a five. 
And that will be how you set up your config file. So we will save this, close it. Before we launch anything using Tor, we're gonna first start out by typing in this command right here. And this is going to tell our, our system that we want to start, not run the status, we want to start Tor. And you'll hit enter, and then to check it, we will go to a system CTL, and then we will type in status, and it will tell us that Tor is enabled. And now we can begin using the proxy chains as well as the Tor browser the way they are designed to be used. And to use proxy chains, it's really easy. So you can go proxy chains Firefox just like this and let it run. And we'll come back to our DNS leak test just like this. And we already ran it on Firefox and you saw that it said I was coming from India. Now it will often break and you'll have to go to a standard test or an extended test and it's going to tell us then where we are coming from, I hope. And this time it tells us we are from the Netherlands. So that is a second way to go ahead and connect to the Tor network. So you have the Tor browser and then we have a proxy chains as well. So we will close out of those. We can clear this. Now I wanna show you if you run Nmap and you try to scan something and see what ports are open on yahoo.com. If I just type in Nmap and I start scanning, they will be able to see my IP address and as it is checking the ports on yahoo.com. But if I wanted to hide my IP address, I would type in proxy chains, we'll delete Firefox, and then we would just, we'd, or we'd say Nmap port 443, we're gonna tell it verbose so we can see this as it runs, and then we're gonna run it through proxy chains. And now it will go through proxy chains and scan the Yahoo network to tell us if port 443 is in fact open. And because we are running this through proxy chains, it will hide our IP address. Now what happens, usually at this point, somebody says, what about my MAC address? My MAC address is still known, my MAC address is still out there, can I change my MAC address? With Kali Linux, the answer is really easy. Yes, you can use what is called Mac Changer, just like this, and you can type in a dash H. And the way you change your Mac address is pretty simple. You can type in M, just like this, and then you can give it the Mac address, or you can type in a dash dash Mac, and then you can set your Mac like this and you just change your MAC address really simply and then before you do any testing or you wanna make sure your MAC address is changed, you can just run an if config and make sure your MAC address is in fact changed. So this is the simplest way for everyday users to become anonymous and hide yourself on the internet. Okay, so now that we've covered the basics of how to be anonymous and hide our identity, as well as use the Tor browser along with the VPN and proxy chains, it has now come time to understand what Tor is and how it works. The way Tor works, when you send your data and it goes through or enters into the first Tor node, the data becomes encrypted and then is sent to another node somewhere else around the world. Tor has at least 6,500 servers as of 2019, and each time your information gets sent, the encrypted information gets sent from one node to the next, the receiving node doesn't have any idea where the information comes from, but only receives where to send the information to next. And then it sends that information and it will go through at least three nodes before it enters into what is called the exit node. And when it reaches the exit node, the encrypted data becomes decrypted and goes to the intended recipient of your data. Now you might've heard that sometimes the exit node can be a place of contention because the exit node decrypts the data and can be intercepted. This is really rare. That doesn't really happen to my knowledge that often. Otherwise, people who are doing shady things on the internet wouldn't be using this service. It is the most secure. So that is the reason cyber criminals and governments go to Tor in order to, to hide their identities and their shenanigans. So you may have also heard or read that sometimes Tor nodes can be compromised. To my knowledge, this has only happened a very few times and maybe it's happened more than I know of. The data that is being sent can be decrypted on those specific nodes and intercepted by an attacker. And I don't think it's something that us as everyday users need to worry about because if it has been done right and it gets intercepted on even the second node, then your data shouldn't be able to lead back to you because it's already been encrypted. The IP 
IP address has already been changed and there's no way to tell where the information has originated from. So the Tor network really is the best way to stay anonymous and browse the internet. Now, if you want, you can choose to use a VPN along with the Tor network. This is something that is really common and a lot of people actually choose to go this way because they choose to trust a VPN provider and then send it through a Tor network. The most popular is NordVPN. So with that, if you have enjoyed this video and you have learned something, please do like and subscribe. Thanks.